Everybody, it's your Browns Friday fumble. Ball on it. Don't try to pick it up and run. My name is Dave, and I'm Dylan, and we are here to discuss all things Browns for Week Four. Week f- we made it to Week Four, guys, and we are still a football team. We're all we're in. I'm not going to say we're not a little battered. We're not a little beat up, but we're all in one piece here. We're all here. We're all here, guys. Uh, and you know what? After the ordeal we had this weekend, I think we should all thank, you know, sit around, take a look at what you got in your life, and, you know, thank the Lord that you got your health. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag too blessed to stress. Um, wanted to give you a little recap of our game experience this week. Yeah, a little different. Uh, originally started out similar similar to last week. I was going to drive this time. Got the old season tickets from Uncle Jack. Yeah. Uh, then old trusty five twenty five five twenty five. Uh, we we were gonna remember to bring the nachos with us this time. Pro tip: bring uh, your own nachos. Yes. Uh, but ended up. Well, we ended up watching the first half. Um. In a a waiting room at a medical facility. Uh. I don't really want to get into a lot of details, you know, TMI and all that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit of uh, uh, some abdominal pain. So we watched first half in uh, in a waiting room of an they, emergency room. I think they your chart actually said generic abdominal pain on it. So uh, I again, I don't want to. It's I'm sure there are HIPAA regulations about that we're just violating. Yeah, I can't really talk about it. Um, so, yeah, first half, not a great half for the Brownies, not a great half for me as I'm sitting there, you know, waiting. Yeah. Uh, what is this, Canada? Yeah. I got I got an hour, hour and a half wait to get in to see somebody. Seriously. On the 24-inch uh, plasma hanging on the in the waiting room. Yeah. Uh, we got them to change anything. it. We got It was on, the, the like, the medical channel that just shows the episodes of the doctors 24 hours a day. I think there was a general hospital worked in there. Yeah, we had to we had to ask them to change it. They did. They saw we were all you know dressed up in our in our gear. I was uh, very kind. The it was. Staff, they saw the that I was wearing my Cameron Wimbley jersey, and uh, Dylan was rocking kind of a kind of a pity play. I think yeah. uh, I had my Orpheus Roy. That's a good Orpheus. That you, I, that's that a classic. You gifted to me. Yeah, actually. I did. It was. It wouldn't fit me. Because of my generic abdominal pains, um, so yeah, it uh, we saw uh, the first half, uh, first quarter really. Then, kind of, I got taken. I think uh, you caught the second half of the first quarter. I got taken back right. to the back, right? And actually, very convenient. Uh, we made it to your private room for the second half. Yeah, we got in there just just in time, and that actually had a nicer TV in there. So. Uh, you know the Browns start playing a little better. I start feeling a little better, uh, but at this point, it, it's late fourth quarter. Right, uh, Browns are starting to drive, and I'm feeling fine. But I'm like, uh, well, the discharge papers were in hand. I remember. Yeah, and uh, I, you know, to be honest with you, I was feeling uh, my pain had subsided to about a two. Right, right. On the scale? I I don't think that was the exact metric number that you gave though. No, because the they we were driving down the field. I mean the they were putting together a hell of a hell of a drive there at the end and then uh you know, Charles Woodson makes that interception. You know, I hit the call button almost instantly then and we we were out of there. We were out of there. Game was over. Uh a little bit different game experience. Unfortunately there were two empty seats there in uh five twenty five. Sorry, Uncle Jack. Sorry, Uncle Jack. We'll get you. I, I asked him, Jack, are you going to go to any of these games? You you spend all this money, and he said he told me, and I quote, "Not until the snow flies." And I'm like, Uncle Jack, you're just a backwards human being. Well, it's a strange strategy, but uh, you know the man's been alive longer than any of us. 
That is true. That is one thing that is true about Uncle Jack. He has been alive. Um, okay, uh, let's jump into, again, hot topic once again this week. Right, guys. Uh we want to jump into this as soon as possible. I think it's uh, again the thing that's on everyone's mind: uh, the the position battle in the Browns locker room. It's very divisive. We heard a lot of stuff this week. A lot of fans. Every fan's got their opinion. Uh, but it turns out in the tight end position battle, pretty much uh, status quo. Right, Hausler. Still sitting the bench. Riding the pine. Uh, Barnage had a little bit of a rough start in the game. And, you know, I, you could hear it through the TV, those Robbie Robbie chants. I was chanting right along with them. I mean, you got when you got Robbie football sitting there, what are you doing playing Barnage? But Barnage picked it up. Right. Uh, you know, and this kind of leads into... Uh, you know, we we try to keep a lighthearted show. We try not to get too serious here because, you know, with the Browns, you can't always get that serious. But we also consider ourselves to be like real journalists and a real uh, good source for information. So when we make a mistake on that, we want to issue a correction. Yeah. Uh, you know, nowadays, everybody's trying to talk like they've got something to say. But nothing comes out when they move their lips. Just a bunch of gibberish. Yeah, and so we'd like to officially apologize. We are sorry that we forgot about Dre. Of course, uh, that's tight end Jim Dre. We did not mention him last week in the position battle. And obviously, you know, uh, then we find out this week, third string tight end Jim Dre signed to a two-year extension. I mean, everybody's like, "What? where out, did that come from? Out of the blue. Out of the blue. You know, and that kind of leads me into another little issue I've got with kind of the Browns right now. Uh, you know, Ray Farmer, as you know, still suspended. Still suspended. And I'm starting to wonder. This is the final week. Final week of the suspension. But it seems like Ray Farmer's assistant, uh, Debbie, continues her overhaul of the Browns roster. Right. And uh look, not saying that she she knew she had four solid weeks. She had the window. And uh and let me tell you, she's taken advantage of that window uh with some real smart footballing moves. Yeah, she knows what she's doing. Uh she also, you know, in another move that's going to make the personnel department I think run a little better. She finally decided like a lot of us have, it's time to ditch the Keurig. We're going back to the full pot of coffee. The flavors aren't good. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just it's just better coffee. You need to respect your coffee a little bit more. Not less waste. You try to be green. But so Debbie, uh, she's got a couple more days. She's made a couple of moves, and I, I don't know what's going to happen when Ray comes back. Us here at uh, Brian Brown's Friday Fumble, we salute you, Debbie, and uh, we're, we'll stand with you. It's been a hell of a job, and. I, I do know, though, it's been a little tense with uh, Mike Pettin and Debbie kind of button heads yeah, well, down there. Know, we he, know that it's not always friendly, head yeah. coach in, in front office, but mm -hmm. I think Debbie has handled it cordially. Mm -hmm. I think she's done it with a digni dignity and grace that this organization uh, hasn't seen in, in quite some time. Yes. We salute you. We salute you, Debbie, mostly for the coffee thing. Um, next up, again, I hate to... I mean, it's just, you know, hey, here's a plate of crow. Yeah, uh, get to eating, Dylan Let, and Dave. Let's start eating. I hate to be the whole, you know, the whole episode is just, hey, have some crow. Right. I've, for me, personally, I feel that uh, we owe it to our fans and also the Cleveland Browns organization. Uh, we owe uh, a huge apology uh, and an explanation uh, I, I'm sure you've heard this week uh, a little bit of Hollywood visiting Cleveland, a report from TMZ Sports. Right. We, and, uh, we, well, we had just been turned away from uh, the media entrance up in Berea. We were, let me, let me step back a little bit. Uh, right, right. End of the day on Tuesday. I, I leave work. I realize I didn't bring any sort of jacket. Now it got chilly. Yeah, All of a sudden on Tuesday. Yeah. 
So I'm about to leave work, and a buddy of mine, you know, I work in the metals business. Uh, a buddy of mine works there. I I asked to borrow his jacket because I know we're going to go up to the Browns front office and uh, try to get our, our, our band lifted. And so I borrow his jacket. It's a Washington Redskins jacket. It's a starter jacket. And I feel a little embarrassed, you know, going to – the Browns, play. I'm like, but I'm not going to freeze my patootie off uh, that, yeah. knowing that in all likelihood I'm not going to be invited inside. So we had just been turned away. We're walking away. I guess we have the look of football players. Uh, so the TMZ reporter approached us, and he says, are you an offensive starter? And I thought, well, crap, I'm wearing a Washington Redskins start. Yeah, this is an offensive starter. We both looked at your jacket. I remember specifically in double double took. We both looked down at your starter jacket. It says Redskins right there. I'm like, yeah. That's uh, very offensive. I, I'm, not, I'm not proud of this. And, uh, yeah, this is an offensive starter. I apologize. And uh, I guess that's where the misunderstanding was. He then started to ask us a few questions. Right. About uh, the starting lineup, uh, and we kind of made some comments about Johnny Manziel, and well, here we are. Here we are. Uh, so, so uh, I just want to offer a, an apology on behalf of you know uh, the the alleged uh, offensive starters. That was us. Yeah, we really. Uh, I want to apologize to the the wide receiver group, uh, Andrew Hawkins. Right, right. Especially uh, that Travis we, Benjamin. Uh, all the way up to Mike Pettin. I, I think we really made it awkward there for everybody, and we really didn't mean to. I It was total misunderstanding. Yeah, and Josh McCown, again, uh, you know, we'll, you, we're going to show up and root no matter what. Yeah. Okay? Uh, personal opinions aside. And you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put an extra jacket in my car because uh, that can't happen again. That's an offensive jacket. Okay, so that wraps it up for the news uh, this week. Let's move over to... It is time to look at our next opponent because we like to... Know your foe. San Diego. The San Diego Superchargers. Yes, yeah, San Diego Superchargers. Let's get into it, Dave. Let us get into it indeed, Best thing about the San Diego Chargers is their uh, disco theme song. Yeah, you know, uh, you'll hear it at the end of the episode. Right, it's reminiscent of uh, of "Come On, Cavs." Yeah, it's right up there with. It's yeah. a classic, classic song, and uh, you know, San Diego. It always kind of brings back memories. I, I've done uh, a little bit of traveling, and I, mm-hmm. I I traveled to San Diego a few years ago, and I, I really enjoyed it there. It's kind of a sister city to Cleveland, right? A you know, lot of similarities. They're both known for their weather, the history, their zoos. Right. But, uh, yeah, I really right. enjoyed my time in San Diego. I stayed in the gas lamp district. Uh, mm. A lot of good cuisine Very nice. down there. Uh, taking in all the sites. They've got that uh, aircraft carrier museum. It's really nice, too. Uh, have you ever been to San Diego? Yeah, 91. Uh, I was out there as a child. Uh, took in the zoo. Uh, we went to a Marie Callender's overlooking the ocean. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Um, yeah, I mean, what I what I remember is the gorillas. You know what? That brings back another memory to me. Uh, one of the first, uh, if you remember, in the dawning age of personal computers at home, yes. I believe I had the San Diego uh, Zoo CD-ROM. Did you? Which allowed you to view... Videos of very cute animals, and this is on yeah. a computer video. What? Yeah, this yeah. was cutting edge technology, and I really, it really, I think, is what one of the things that really got me into computers. Well, the San Diego Zoo has always been, you know, uh, the forefront uh, at zoology technology. Yeah, they really like to push the limits out there, and uh, right, and 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 uh, exhibitionism. Um, well, I really didn't get into that much while I was there, but, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I will ne- next time. So on to power rankings, <laughs> the power rankings, everybody for power rankings, a little bit of a shift this week. 
And uh, I say we run it from the top this week, not let's stay away from the basement dwellers. Right. Uh, number one, New York state of mind, gangrene. The New York Jets, folks, coming in at number one on the power rankings for week four. Number one on the charts. <laughs> uh, coming in at number two, unfortunately. The the vaunted Oakland Raiders. Vaunted Oakland Raiders. That's uh, the vaunted index. Well, according to Chris Sims, uh, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else caught that broadcast. Uh, Derek Carr has the all the makings of a of an elite quarterback and Amari Cooper just leaves you with your mouth hanging wide open. And so that's why we've put them at number 2. We take what Chris Sim says very seriously. Incredibly seriously. Coming in at number 3, your Cleveland Browns, your own uh, hometown Cleveland Browns. Come back full, fell a bit short, but uh you know, we're not all the way in the bottom because that spot reserved. Reserved for the Tennessee Oiler Titans, because they are still dwelling in the basement. Yes. Marcus Maricata. Take that. All right. You hear that music. That means it is time for one thing and one thing only. The Johnny Manziel Watch. Manziel Watch week four. Week four away. Late game, but also early in the same time because of the time difference. How is this going to affect... When Johnny comes in. You know, Dave, uh, with all the reading I've done on the way that San Diego lines up defensively, the San Diego Superchargers, yes. uh, I really think we're going to see Johnny at the end of the second quarter. Uh, give him a drive. You know, they talked about a package. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that package is going to come out in the late second quarter, before we head into the locker room, give him some confidence, something to talk about, to look out on film. He comes out in the third quarter. I expect to see that we're going to see a bolstered run game with Johnny manning the wheel. All right. Uh, I have a slightly different prediction than you. I'm looking forward to it. This McCown stuff, smokescreen. Johnny starts. You heard it here first, folks. Johnny starts. McCown smoke screen and all that joking that they've been doing all week about hey i don't know what uh, team's who's doing what oh what i didn't hear any of this stuff. i don't know what i'm doing oh i've never what's the internet smoke screen smoke screen and here is your cleveland conspiracy sports theories for <laughs> week four a little bit of a bounce back after uh, a rough couple of weeks for the celebrity fans uh, we got some good celebrity fans this week for San Diego Superchargers. San Diego Superchargers uh, actually have uh, a lot of star power going on. Yes. Uh, number one, Anne Hathaway. I wouldn't have thought. Well, she's a beautiful woman. She is a beautiful a woman. Beautiful voice. Mm-hmm. Beautiful style. Unfortunate choice of football team. Unfortunate. Uh, next, we have A.C. Slater himself. Mario Lopez, preppy, former quarterback of the Bayside Tigers, A.C. Slater. Yeah. Uh, he beat Valley every year. Every single year. Uh, maybe yeah. you could uh, get in the get in the ring and uh, maybe give Phillip Rivers a couple pointers. Maybe. It's possible. And last but certainly not least, the Rap Rock Combo P.O.D., Yes, which of course sets up the huge rivalry we all know about, mm-hmm. and that is San Diego's POD and Los Angeles's Corn. And uh, boy, not a bigger rivalry in music sports than that. Okay, so the moment that uh, well, me and you have been waiting for. Yeah, I. That's about it. We've done a little market testing, and we might limit this segment going forward because it turns out that like. There's a Venn diagram of people in our fantasy league and people that listen to this podcast, and that turns out it is us and one other guy. And that's it. So that, it's time to talk about my fantasy team. And it turns out that <laughs> that Venn diagram uh, also represents interest in this segment. Yes, it's it's a narrow, 
narrow audience, so <laughs> we will try to limit it. Uh, essentially, the biggest fact I'd like to report is through all day Sunday, I assumed I had Gary Barnage on my team. Right. It, it's, he's really the type of guy that I should have on my fantasy team. Right. Because of the other five Browns players that you did have on your team. Yes. Right. Uh, so I corrected that for this week. I now have Gary Barnage. And what's annoying to me, and, and I think why I'm going to limit this segment uh, in the future anyway, uh, I actually kind of turned out good this year. Right. And uh, I essentially, I lost this week. And I would have literally beaten every other team in the league this week because I had a right. great week, but the opponent I had had an even greater week. Here's your takeaway metric. Uh, with five Browns active players on your roster, you have now put up three, two out of three of the top scores in our league. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, it's not very funny anymore. Yeah, it's really not the kind of look how bad Dave is at this. Now it's just Dave's kind of angry. This was supposed to be a little bit of a pressure release after a Browns loss, and all it does is make it worse. So, Just like everyone else's fantasy team. Yes. So I want to hear from you guys, and I kind of have been messing with this issue in my own head. Do you actually like fantasy football, or do you do it because your friends are basically going to say, what do you like a Tottenham fan now or something? What are you gonna watch some soccer Saturday? You watch, wake up early and and watch some EPL. Yeah, or do you actually like it? And just just let us know. And you know what? It's about time to finish up this episode, so we need to do the most important bit of the week, and that is your prediction for the Browns versus the San Diego Superchargers, who we I feel we know a lot more about now. Absolutely. I think we've, we've talked at length about their roster. Done we've, a lot of research. We've dug into their... Uh, fascinating, fascinating stuff. Right. So uh, it all comes down to this. Knowing what we know now, what's your prediction for this week? Cleveland Browns 26, San Diego Superchargers 17 points. That's a bold prediction. Yeah. How about you? Me, I see this as a big bounce back game for our Brownies. I think the D finds themselves. I think the offense starts to build on the momentum they had last week. I think the Browns find themselves a West Coast winner, 28-3. to Very nice. Very nice. You take a, that, huh? A WCW. Huh? Exactly. Yes. Yes. All right, folks. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can find me on Twitter, at Democo, And me on Twitter, at Dylan B. Price. Or there will be a thread posted on the uh, Waiting for Next Year website, and there's where I want you to tell me, or on Twitter, do you actually like fantasy football? And not the segment. I We know nobody likes the segment. but uh, Very clear feedback on our market research. Very clear feedback. So, on that note, thank you for listening. And last week, Craig wasn't here, so maybe turn it back to Craig, and maybe have a great day.